Okay, we will determine the resultant force and acceleration of a block sitting on a surface. In this case, there is friction. And first, what we do is to define our positive x direction. And with 12 in the positive x direction, minus 240 in the x direction, that would give us 230 newtons negative. Notice that it's actually 228, but with two significant digits, we have 230. We'll also determine the mass of the object, which would be the force due to gravity, which is 30, divided by 9.81 acceleration due to gravity on Earth. And that gives us 3.1 kilograms. So the force of friction, in this case, the force of static friction would be equal to the force of gravity times the coefficient of static friction, which is 0 0.90, and that gives us 27 newtons. So if I were to apply a force that is smaller than this, the net force is smaller than 27, it would not move, and the resultant force would be zero, and the resultant acceleration would be zero. If this resultant force here were smaller than the static friction force. But in this case, the resultant force is 230, 230 in the left direction, and that is greater than 27, so it does move. So to determine now the movement, I need to take, because it does move, I don't need the static friction force, but the kinetic friction force. So that would be 30, the same normal force, times the coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.60, and that would give me 18 newtons. There is less frictional force with kinetic than there is with static. So I would determine the resultant force would be 230. Friction force is always against the motion. So 230 minus 18, and that resultant force would be 212 newtons. The acceleration due to this force, the acceleration would be that force divided by the mass of the object, 3.1 kg. And that would give me 68 meters per second squared to the left. So this resultant force is negative, negative according to my axes.